Thank you all for joining us. It is as always a treat to have, it's been a year since we've had your yeah, group here. It's been a full year. Hard to believe it's whole years passed by <laughs> <laughs> since we've done this. Um, it is always great to have these wonderful musicians. Um, let's get us started off with what are we going to hear first? Sure. We're going to uh, start off with a Brazilian quartet and we've, I'm going to introduce the players and then I'll, I'll say the name of the piece. Um, we have Jesse Volk come and we have uh, Jaron Bundy. Uh, we have uh, Blake Bush and Kaylin Fry. They're going to be playing a Brazilian piece by the great Paulo Bellanacci, and uh, they're going to do a piece called Bayom Giguji.
wonderful, wonderful job. Wonderful job. Brilliant playing, guys. Great. What a fascinating piece. It's interesting. Uh, it has kind of a, a story behind it. Um, uh, of course, I'm missing my colleague tonight, uh, Dr. Oliveira, yes, uh, who's uh, from Brazil, and uh, he is out teaching in Aruba uh, this right. evening. But um, the storyline behind this piece is uh, sort of like four players, um, I guess, comparable to playing marbles, if you will, mm -hmm. but with guitars, right? Wow. And kind of passing around the, the notes, so to speak. So it's a fun, fun piece. Wonderful, wonderful. Who we uh, who are we gonna hear next? Yeah, we're gonna hear. Um, we'll, we'll keep uh, the music in Brazil for a little bit here. Uh, we'll play a piece called Chico Chico No Fuba, and uh, this is by the great Brazilian composer uh, Zequinha de Abril. And uh, we'll have four players on this piece as well. Uh, we have Nathan Keith just here to my right. Um, we also have, uh, Scott Kubecki. And uh, Blake, I'm sorry, uh, Eli Ronk, and um, at the very end, Weston Slavich. And uh, look forward to hearing you guys. Wonderful. Now, are all of you guys guitar majors or various? You're not. What? What? What's your major? Um, I'm a music business major. Music business so I have major. I'm a classical guitar minor. So. There, well, there you go. <coughs> there you go. Um, juniors, for freshmen, sophomore. Who's? Yeah. Juniors. Juniors. Sophomore. 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 Yeah. And uh, you've been with us before, because I, I remember have. that. Any of you? Have, and you've yes, been with us before. Guys. Okay. Sure. Good. 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 Well, welcome. Thank you so much. Brilliant playing, guys. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Nice job. Um, Great job. Uh, what's next? Yeah, let's keep moving. Um, <coughs> so the next piece uh, is by, um, we're going to move to Argentina and play a piece by Mashimo Diego Pujol. Uh, and this is called Final Feliz. Um, 
uh, Final Happiness translation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is Blake Bush and Jesse Balcom, who's going to do uh, another duet. They played in the first group for us today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Jesse and Blake are uh, freshmen this year. We're so happy that uh, all these students are here uh, making music with us at Belmont. Um, Jesse, remind me where you're from. Connecticut. Connecticut, and where yeah. are you from? Uh, Spokane, Washington. Spo okay. Spokane, Washington. So. I was just in Spokane, Washington just a couple of uh, <coughs> weeks ago uh, doing some work with a wonderful church in Clarkston uh, and Lewiston, Idaho, right in that area. Yeah, yeah. But we had breakfast in Spokane. It was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, wonderful. And, and so, wh I'm sorry, what are they going to play? They're going to play a piece by Mashimo Diego Pujo. It's a piece that's kind of patterned after uh, Astro Piazzolla's music uh, uh, from Argentina. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll play a piece called Final Feliz, which means final happiness. Wonderful. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> now, uh, you guys have already had your concert for this semester, right? Yes, we did that actually uh, last week. And so how was that? It was very nice. Uh, we had a few more groups than we brought with us tonight, but uh, we had a really uh, a great evening of mu making music, and the guys, everyone that is playing tonight, uh, were involved with that concert. So uh, we invited them back out for tonight's show. So. Good. Yeah. And this is from Belmont University here in Nashville, uh, <coughs> Tennessee, one of the legendary music schools in the nation. And uh, we're just always so thrilled to have their, um, their guitar ensemble and these classical guys come. And uh, we don't have any of the jazz guys this, this time. Uh, yeah, we're not. Uh, uh, they're, uh, the person that directs those <coughs> folks, um, Dr. Oliveira, mm -hmm. is out of town. Yep. And, uh, but yeah, maybe we can do that next time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Paulo is in... Aruba, uh, working with uh, Musical a Musical, a wonderful group that uh, they go and conduct uh, music workshops in Latin American countries, and so he's off doing that. I did that with Musical a Musical for many years, and so uh, 
Paul, but I didn't get to go to Aruba, though. So <laughs> Paul was in Aruba. What's the deal? But uh, I know he's having a good time and helping a lot of folks. So uh, what are we going to hear next? Yeah, so these guys are going to do a piece. We're going to change uh, out here to a French-style piece. And uh, the title is uh, interesting. It's uh, De Holé Blues, which means funny blues, if we translate it. And pardon my French, uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it starts off but nothing like the blues. So we promise we will deliver some blues before the piece <laughs> is over. <laughs> Wonderful. We did hear a little blues in there. We did. Can I introduce these folks? Because I, I, in the drama of trying to pronounce the piece correctly, I left out their names. So this is Nathan Keith, and this is Scott Kubecki, and they were in the previous group as well. So guys, great job. Excellent. Uh, Nathan, um, what's your major? Uh, I'm a commercial guitar major. Commercial guitar major. So you primarily are playing probably electric. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of, um, actually, the jazz stuff now. So yeah. yeah. Good. Um, but I always love doing classical, and I don't. I kind of started in the ensemble here, and I didn't really want to stop playing it, so. Well, you, you play it so well, and it, probably this was your first introduction to classical music was at, at university level. I had played some uh, classical music before. I used to play upright bass in the orchestra, yeah. but I, this is my first introduction to classical guitar, classical guitar music, anything like that, and it did not take very long for me to fall in love with it. Wonderful. 
And Scott, what about you? Yeah, I'm a music business major. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I was right. a minor in classical, yeah. but I never had any prior classical training. Um, I used to play electric guitar prior to college, and then I started um, with my minor in, in the ensemble. Um, I just loved it so much, and Good. I want to keep playing pieces. So. Good. And I will say, both of these guys, as well as many of the other folks, all the folks that are here tonight, and some of the folks that didn't come with us tonight even, um, they just kind of, they jump in, they, they are passionate about it, they work really hard. I never ask them to memorize anything. <laughs> and you see, there's no music in front of them, so uh, they work. I'm very proud of uh, them because they've got so much to do, uh, whether it's a music business major or commercial guitar. I mean, it's not like you have lots of free time. So um, both of these folks, they, they always do excellent jobs as well as the other folks that we brought with us tonight. So Wonderful. very proud. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Um, now, Robert, you've been doing this ensemble for how many years now? I think it's 150 years. Yeah. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, next year, it's kind of funny you bring that up, because I, I really didn't want to bring this up. <laughs> but uh, in the fall, um, actually next spring, uh, will be 30 years 30 I've been doing years. the ensemble. And it started with a very innocent lunch with one of uh, the uppers, if you will, uh, the senior faculty, invited me to lunch, and I just started teaching at Belmont. And I was playing a guitar duo and kind of known around town for playing in an ensemble. And yeah. he said, you should start a guitar ensemble program at Belmont. And I said, oh, uh, sure, you know. <laughs> and uh, before long, um, we started, and we had eight people in the class. And our first, I remember the pieces we played. The first piece we played was the Baccarini Introduction and in Fandango. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a very difficult quartet. And I remember one of my colleagues coming up to me, great job. That was really ambitious. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it's been a long time. You have been kind of the founder and the vision for this amazing group of musicians. And so many uh, wonderful guitarists have come out of this program. Thank you. So thank well, you for your, your efforts training the next generation of uh, guitarists. So, I look at music as a gift, and it's something that should be passed on. Yes. You know? And I'm very humble about what I have to offer. And we have so many great guitar uh, colleagues I have been blessed with throughout the years. And uh, of course, we now have Dr. Oliveira leading yeah. the program, who's coached uh, many of the Brazilian groups uh, and some of the others tonight. And um, so we have that expertise. Uh, a couple of my other colleagues uh, that teach private classical guitar, uh, Dr. or Mr. Francis Perry, should, yeah. and of course, uh, Mr. Jefferson Rogers. Um, and then uh, Mr. De Silva, uh, Mr. Mark Godwin, and of course our newest co colleague, I don't think you've met him yet, who really is just an amazing um, commercial musician and uh, electric guitarist, jazz guitarist, uh, is Dr. Robinson. And uh, so just, just a great group of people. And we ha all have, I think one thing in mind is, is passing along the knowledge, whatever that may be, to our students and getting them making music, you yeah. know? That's the most important thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. What are we going to hear next? Yeah. Um, so the next group, uh, we move back to Brazil. We play a lot of Brazilian music, don't we? Um, so this is a piece by Celso Machado. It's a piece called Imagens no Dordestre. And uh, that translates roughly to Images of the Northeast. We're going to have Nathan Keith, who's back again. Thank back you, again. This is song, song number three, I think. <laughs> number three. Uh, Devin Lalande. And he's going to, uh, they're going to be playing this piece. Uh, the, as I understand it, uh, the northeast of Brazil, I've not been to Brazil, but the northeast of Brazil is um, a wonderful uh, center for uh, rhythmic music. And uh, there's a lot of different influences, several different types of music. And it's a very warm climate, too. So uh, we'll pretend like we're in Brazil tonight. And yeah. we'll play this one for, for Dr. Oliveira, wherever he may be <laughs> in Aruba. <laughs> <laughs>
What a beautiful sound. Wonderful, guys. Yeah, Wonderful. Um, classical guitar. Let's talk about nylon string guitars for, uh, for a, a minute. Different from steel mm -hmm. string, get a very mm -hmm. different sound, a very, very mm -hmm. c unique sound. If you're used to kind of steel strings mm -hmm. and electrics, tell us some of the unique things about nylon string classical guitars. Well, um, the, the most huge difference is we use nylon strings instead of steel strings. Uh, the bracing pattern is different. Um, sort of the, the whole construction of the guitar is designed differently for the most part. Although, um, I was just very uh, blessed that um, Mr. Gruen, when I walked mm -hmm. in tonight, uh, gave me a, just an impromptu um, run through on how Martin guitars actually yeah. uh, could have gone the classical direction, mm -hmm. but took the other direction, you know? Yeah. So, um, but a lot of makers these days are building instruments and trying to get as much volume out of them. So uh, the five fan um, construction that was really popular in the very early Spanish making days mm -hmm. have changed to a variety of different, really souped up, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a more delicate sound. Uh, you can shape the sound a little bit more uh, for the most part than you can on a steel string. Yeah. The necks are wider. Necks the bodies tend wider. to be smaller. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, uh, it's such a sweet and, and also, I mean, delicate, but it can be powerful as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you're out there listening, um, I would encourage you to check out if you've never played nylon string guitar. It's a, it's a fun guitar to add to your arsenal. I tell you, if I uh, you know, had to go to a desert island and only had one guitar, I'd probably grab my classical. <laughs> so uh, it's just uh, a more relaxed instrument uh, to play. So I love, uh, I love that. Um, before we get to the, new, the next song, let's give something away. Uh, kind of do a few announcements here. We've got... Um, We've been off for a couple of weeks from our live lessons. Um, I've been busy doing <coughs> a couple different things. I was in Washington for a while, uh, uh, working with some musicians up there. Last week, I was at a guitar building camp making an acoustic guitar. Um, I don't have it here with me because uh, we were busy with the Belmont folks, but um, we will do a show actually in a couple of weeks talking about uh, the guitar that I built and, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it turned out pretty well considering I personally know that the guy who put it together had no idea what he was doing. So I had no <laughs> idea what he was doing. But it, was, it ended up being a lot more work than I would have ever imagined. To put, to, to, you got to shave braces down and put frets in and, and you got to polish those off. And you were, I was on my feet, you know, for uh, more than 40 hours in that week. Uh, so it was just a lot of work putting together, but it's fascinating. I was with uh, several amazing Folks, one of them is legendary Nashville songwriter uh, Alan Shamblin, who I'm hoping to get on the show here in a couple of weeks. Uh, he wrote uh, Miranda Lambert's House That Built Me and uh, oh, Can't Make You Love Me and all these, some really legendary songs. And here he was just the guy in the next booth next to me. We were both putting together guitars. So we'll see if we can get Alan on the show. But um, coming up in about um, three weeks, we're going to have Trevor Gordon Hall, uh, acoustic fingerstyle. Uh, guitarist. We've had him on the show before, and he's been at our conference, uh, our Fall Fingers Style Retreat and stuff, and he happens to be coming through Nashville doing a show, and so he's going to be on our show at the end of uh, kind of April 23rd around there. So, But hey, let's give something away. Um, I don't have my uh, normal thing, so I'm just going to give some away. Somebody, give somebody here. I'm going to give Ryan Mallet. Ryan Mallet. You have just won a Groon's mug, a Groon's mug. So congratulations, Ryan. Send me your information at service at guitargathering.com. Uh, mailing address, things like that, and we will get you off your official Groon's mug. The, be the first one on your block with a Groon guitar mug. So congratulations, Ryan. Um, what, do we, what do we have next? Yeah, we're moving back to um, do some more duets here. Um, we have uh, Jaron Bundy, and we also have Devin Lalonde. They're going to do a piece called Danza Brasileira by uh, the great Jorge Morel. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Excuse me. Wonderful. You guys were grooving. That was great. That's Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Um, had a couple of questions. Bob is asking, what is the most common nylon string guitar that the students use? Um, you know, for a while we were recommending Cordoba just because they're so easily accessible. And we were specifically, I hate to, I'm not endorsing the guitar, but it was just right. a well-constructed instrument for the money. Uh, was a, one of the C5s, you know, yep. and still a nice guitar. It's not a solid body guitar, but it's in the $400 price range and usually pretty consistent. In fact, you probably remember a student that came over many years ago, Caitlin Preboy. She had one of the best Cordoba C5s I've ever, ever played in my life. Uh, but at any rate, um, and then when you get into their upper range of C10s, you get to solid woods, but variety, a wide variety. We have a student here tonight that has a Humphrey, uh, Thomas Humphrey guitar, uh, which, uh, you know, one of the great guitar builders of the 20th century. So um, that's Blake uh, Bush who played earlier for us. So. Wow. Yeah. Um, and what's your guitar, Caitlin? Um, I don't know what the make is, but the name of the luthier is uh, Carvalho. <coughs> oh, okay. Works out of Brazil. Yeah. So you um, just got that guitar recently. So I just too. got that yeah. guitar. Nice. Right. Um, Bob is asking, what is the average practice time that students need? Well, you know, they're probably best to ask, of course, I know what it takes me and my own duo to, to work this stuff up. Um, we spend three hours a week together in class, um, and they practice for the most part, for the larger part of that. We perform for each other, and, and they play their pieces. Um, some of the additional coaching happens sometimes. Uh, there are private teachers that teach them, maybe give them some fingering advice or um, expertise in some style of music they're particularly playing. Um, how much do you guys practice? <laughs> Just classical? Just classical, yeah. I try to do an hour a day. Hour a day. I always get yeah. it. What about you, Caitlin? I would say the same, hour, two hours a day. Okay. And keep in mind, these folks, are you a commercial major? I am. Okay. So <laughs> th this, you know, I want to make real clear that um, I'm always just blown away by the fact that they, they get all this stuff together because their main gig, so to speak, is the commercial guitar, you know? Yeah. So, and they do such a great job, so. What are we going to hear next? Yeah, so we're going to move to an older piece by the great Spanish composer Fernando Sor. Um, and the, we're going to do a waltz. Uh, they're going to do a waltz. Uh, waltz number four, opus uh, uh, 44. And we have Linda Coleman and we have Kaylin uh, Fry going to play for us.
wonderful, wonderful sore piece, one of the founding fathers of classical guitar. Yeah, I think his duets, uh, quite honestly, I'm a little partial because I play a lot of ensemble music, but I think his dual music is, is spectacular. You know, some of, he wrote, um, I don't know, probably about 12 guitar duets. And uh, this is the first time we've done this piece. And I just have to, I'm going to say something about Linda. She's, this is her first semester in the ensemble, you know? And Kaylin has joined us several semesters. But um, I just was really excited to see, uh, I'm always excited to see a new player kind of dive into this, you know? Yeah. Because, it, you know, you've done a great job. And I just want to say everyone, you know, has really played well tonight. Thank you. Wonderful. Linda, where are you from? Chicago. How did you find your way to Nashville and Belmont? Well, my sister actually went to Belmont, so oh, I kind of okay. just followed her. <laughs> good, good, yeah. good, good. Well, it's a, an amazing program that's put out so many legendary musicians over the years. <coughs> I apologize for my cough. I'm kind of working through a cold here. <laughs> and uh, Okay, what are we going to hear next? Yeah, so we'll move on here. Um, the next piece, a um, little personal story about it. Uh, we're, we're moving over to a piece by the great, um, one of my favorite composers, uh, Sergio Assad. And uh, this is a piece uh, called Remembrance. And this arrangement is for three guitars. Although originally, I remember back in the uh, mid 90s, staying up all night, uh, transcribing it by ear before the sheet music was published. So um, <laughs> wow. later became kind of uh, good friends with Mr. Assad, and he uh, gave, was able to provide the sheet music to me. And, uh, but this is a trio arrangement by uh, Edson Lopez uh, for three guitars. We're going to hear again um, Nathan Keith, Devin Lalonde, and uh, Jaron Bundy. Um, and this piece was originally written for a Japanese film uh, called Natsu no Niwa. And um, he wrote a solo guitar arrangement, and tonight we're going to hear the trio version. So. Wow. Wonderful.
And what an absolutely lovely piece. Beautiful melody. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Great arrangement. And uh, yeah, it was just beautiful. Thank you all uh, for being with us. And thank you all of us that have come and played. It's just been a delight to uh, have you here with us. Um, wonderful. When does your semester end? Uh, class is in around April 23rd, 24th. So um, we're on Easter break um, Thursday and Friday, and then we'll come back and, and knock the rest of it out. A couple so. more weeks and then yeah. finals and... Guitar juries. <laughs> Guitar juries, that's right. <laughs> but this, this, this is the uh, spring semester, so some of you guys are probably graduating? Is any Ooh. one of this group graduating? I actually don't think so. I don't think so, yeah. Good. Not yet. So good. Some more time. All right. Good. Well, we look forward to having you back again. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. For Thank being you. Part, Thank you again. Part yeah. of this, and uh, it is always a joy to have you and your crew back. Thank you. And uh, it's uh, thank you for your work in training these musicians. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and we, it, it's just such uh, a great honor to have these students uh, be allowed this experience. So, yeah. um, I remember one time when I was in college, I got to play on our local. Um, National Public Television, yeah. you know, and it was like, it, it, it was a, a very wonderful, I still remember that, so I know Good. they'll always remember this experience. Well, well it's a joy having, having y'all, it's a highlight uh, every time we were able to, to work it out. Thank so. you, thank, thank you so you. much for having us. Steve. You bet.